Hey guys, Cleo here, and I'm going to be doing a reading vlog for S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst. So as you've been able to tell from the clips that I've shared before, it's a very interesting one in which we have basically a story taking place on two levels. You have the actual text of the book, Ship of Theseus, and then you have two readers who are writing to one another within the margins. They don't know one another personally, but they get to know one another through the text that they are writing towards one another. And through their conversations, we are also introduced to some other characters that are, you know, going to play some sort of a role within this story. The main elements, or sort of like the main mystery element to this, is the author of Ship of Theseus, like the author of the book within the book. And so he is um, basically a mystery. Nobody knows who the actual author is of the book, but there are se several theories floating around. And so our readers will be discussing the likelihoods of these different candidates actually being the author through the margins. Um, at this point in time, I'm like two chapters plus the introduction into it and I have realized I need to take things way slower with this book. Not way slower than I currently have, but way slower than plan. Because basically the plan was to finish this book before the weekend. So tomorrow, I would have to finish it tomorrow, but I'm like not even a hundred pages into this book and it's over 400 pages long. So my new plan is going to be to read one chapter of this every day and then for the rest of my evening read something else. It hopefully won't impact my, you know, reading months too much. Um, but my reading month was very ambitious, so we'll see. Alright guys, I have basically read like, I don't know, seven pages or so today in Ship of Theseus S, whatever you want to call it. And I think I'm actually going to put it down, which is a huge disappointment because yes, it's going to definitely be like positive for my reading month because I have a super um, overwhelming, ambitious TBR this month. But this is definitely one that I was super excited about finally getting around to. And I was really hoping to absolutely love this one. But as I said, I was just like not fully engaged with it. You know, I felt like the flow was constantly being disrupted because you are moving between the different layers of the story. And that can definitely be done differently. You know, in A Course of Dragons, for example, we also have footnotes accompanying a story and those footnotes never really took me out of the story at all. They definitely contributed to the flow. And in this case, I feel like the combination of the footnotes with and also having the um, discussions in the margins about both the footnotes as what is happening within the text meant that I was constantly switching between these three layers of text and that I was never giving any of the layers their due attention, it feels like. I feel like the most attention went to the margins because I mostly enjoyed reading the conversations taking place within the margins a lot more than I enjoyed the principal story. And in principle, some of the thematic I enjoy. I enjoyed the thematic of memory. I enjoyed the idea of um, identity. I really enjoyed that whole idea of them looking for an author's identity and, you know, the idea of whether an author's life story, what impact an author's life story and their journey has on the text that they are writing, as well as intertextuality between the different stories that he has written. So I like those aspects of it, but it just never came together to anything that I'm enjoying. And at this point in time, <laughs> I tried to read like the chapter that I was going to read today, but like I don't know, five pages in or something, I'm already nodding off. I'm already having to fight sleep. I'm already finding myself really falling asleep, you know, really uh, jolting awake. And these are things that to me really indicate that I'm not having a good time with a book. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that it's a no for me, which means I have tonight and tomorrow night to still read something other than my current read before Becca's book uh, I have already started an audiobook, which I don't think I'm going to talk about um, within this vlog, uh, which will be the book that I'm reading next week. Um, but I will now also attempt to finish The Lost World and Other Stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle this week. 
And so yeah, not the update I wanted to give you guys, but you know, we do support DNFing books here. If you're not having a good time, then definitely put the book down, guys. If you are finding it difficult to stay awake while reading a book, maybe this is not a book for you. Okay, never mind. Weekend! Don't mind the hair. <laughs> it's standing in weird angles um, because I need to wash it. But so I am ready to start the weekend. It is Becca's book up So um, I am basically going to be cooking almost immediately. And then I need to eat hopefully a little bit earlier than normal though it is already five so probably i'll just eat at regular time but the idea is that i will get some sleep in before one o'clock my time because one o'clock my time is 12 o'clock this is not 12 it's 12 o'clock becca's time so it's the start of book -Platon. so i am going to have to go to the grocery store as well because i want some junk food so i definitely at least want crisps um and I want some coke uh, and don't have coke in the house so I want some junk food but my intention is going to be not to buy too much neither. Previous attempts at 48 hour readathons have also shown me that I really don't eat a whole lot of extra junk if I'm awake for 48 hours compared to if I'm not so I don't I shouldn't go crazy on the junk neither because that will just mean that I have more junk to eat afterwards so much for not buying too much so basically this bag has three sorts of crisps baguettes for lunch and then asian mix and then in here i've got like a ton of um sort of like asian deep free snacks but that's okay if i don't end up using those got some um noodles instant noodles got my coke so yeah more deep free snacks and at the bottom there i just got like cheese i think and so here i also have the um energy drink so in the end i did go with more options than what i actually need also put some fruit in there so also got a, a healthy option in there and i do have more fruit in here for example and more other healthy options but so in the end I did go with lots of choices, which means that there will be lots of leftovers, which isn't ideal, but never go to the grocery store. No, I'll never go to the grocery store hungry, apparently. All right, I had my lasagna and now it's just time to wait for Bex Bacopathon, I guess. I mean, I think I'm gonna stay up for like two more hours, probably, just so that digestion can have done its work and things like that and I can be a little bit more tired so then it will be around eight and it will be five hours until book up -laton. so yeah then I'm gonna try and go to sleep but I thought that I'd already like set up this weekend for you guys I don't know which vlog this is going to go into and so I don't know it, it complicates things but let's just talk about it so in order to set you guys up for Becca's Book Upathon, I'm going to talk about the books that I'm planning to read. So there are two priority reads for this weekend, and they are both book two prize books, which is why I might not talk about them in this vlog, unless this is the book two prize vlog. <laughs> but so um, the first one of these is Heaven by Miko Kawakami. This is basically a book translated from Japanese. It is... Um, a book about bullying. It is a very short book and so for Becca's Book Uppleton this is actually covering both of the first roles which is a short book and it is um, Gods because of the title. The title has a link with Gods and so that's enough for me. <laughs> so this is my first read and um, it's gonna cover both of the first two prompts unless I need the second prompt for the second book that I absolutely want to finish this weekend so second book is my heart by Semedzin. i forgot the name of the author so i'll have it on the screen um this is a book translated from bosnian and it is a book about this guy in his 50s i think who has just had a heart attack and he is looking back on his life in particular on the period of the bosnian war and so 
This is the second book. It's also a short book, so if need be, I'm gonna split the prompts from the first roll drop to cover both of these books. But if at any point later on within the readathon there is any sort of prompt that would fit that book, then that is also perfectly fine. Hey guys, oh, that alarm clock was just the worst. I'm really not that awake yet and my hair woke up on really like the greasy as fuck uh, side of the bed. But so I'm gonna have a shower later when it's like daylight. But I mean, I could use one now, I guess, but I really don't feel like taking a shower in the middle of the night. So. Uh, we are starting off, as I indicated earlier, with Heaven by Miko Kawakami. This is a book about two kids who are heavily bullied at school and um, they strike up a friendship and I'm expecting it to be kind of heartbreaking. It is already kind of difficult to read, so do know that if you have a trigger for bullying, then this will be difficult because I don't necessarily have a trigger for it. It's definitely not content that I like reading, um, but it's... I'm like... 20 pages in, it's already been difficult to read some of these bullying scenes. Bullying is a huge issue in Japan, apparently. And so a book like this is definitely very important. It's definitely a topic that is uh, important to Japanese society. I've read another book, Lonely Castle in the Mirror, which also addresses school bullying. And the bullying that's described here really is on another level than, you know, what I imagine when I think of bullying. When I think of bullying... I think of like, you know, mocking somebody, maybe, you know, maybe like pushing them around from time to time. But things that are happening in this one are really on another level sometimes. So do know that going into it. But so yeah, I'm like 20 pages in. I don't know too much yet. So I'm just going to continue. But I am already like struggling a little bit. So one hour into the readathon, I don't yet know when I'm going to go to sleep. I probably might try to sleep a little bit during the next sprints um, and then just go until the morning and then um, wake up again to kind of complete my eight hours of sleep. Um, but we'll see what ends up happening. Maybe I'll feel more awake in like an hour's time and then I'll feel ready to just like keep going for the remainder of the day. We'll have to see. Hey guys, it is Saturday morning, lunchy, no, not totally not lunchy time yet. It is like 9.40. Um, my eye is acting up because I rubbed it too much when I was feeling sleepy. But so uh, I had just got into the shower. I had a little bit of sleeping sprints. So basically from 5 to 8.15 or something, I was asleep. I then had like... I did something stupid because right before going to sleep, I set on the alarm for 10 o'clock because I was like, yeah, if I'm back at it at 10 o'clock, I'll be very happy. Um, but I forgot that there's like a alarm that goes off every day that I hadn't turned off yet. And so I had that alarm go off at like 6.30, I guess. And it took me until like 6.45 to realize that that was not the alarm to wake up. So I was like ignoring it, snoozing it and being like, oh, I feel like I've had zero sleep since laying down again, which was correct because I had only had like an hour and a half max of sleep at that point in time. But so yeah, luckily I did eventually realize and so I went back to sleep and then I naturally woke up around 8.15 and so I tried to go back to sleep, but it didn't end up happening. So here I am awake again and so yeah, I'm going to... Hopefully still do like a little bit of a nap somewhere in the afternoon because I do, as I said, want to do the 1 to 5 a.m. sprints uh, on Sunday. So for that, I need a little bit more sleep, I think, uh, or else I'm just going to be falling asleep during those sprints. But so, yeah, uh, I, up until this point, I got to like page 70 or something like that. So I have around 90 
or 95, something like that, pages left to go. So I will probably not be done with it yet before the next roll drop, but I will more or less be done. So it is two o'clock. Uh, we had the roll drops around one. And so the two next prompts are to read an ebook or an audiobook and to read a book with a color in the title, which is the big problem here. But um, I'm gonna sit on those prompts for a little bit. I have some options and you know, I also have some like super fast options in case I want to go that route. I think for now, I'm just gonna continue, like I need to continue heaven, first of all, I still have some 30 pages left in that. And then I'll just continue either already with the second main book for this readathon, or I'm gonna uh, listen a little bit more to The Lost World and Other Stories by Arjun Kalong Doyle. I can definitely use The Lost World and Other Stories for both prompts if I want to, but it's like stretching the color prompts because I'm currently reading The Land of Mist is a novella within that collection that I'm currently reading. And if you look for the color mist, it exists. So I can use it, but we'll see. Um, I would like a little bit more of a clear cut <laughs> um, prompt, but we'll see. Maybe I'll have to do it like that. But so yeah, we'll see how things go on. And um, now I just had lunch i had an amazing doll and so i'm ready re filled up and so it's time for me to continue reading all right i finished my second book it is 3 30 no not my second i finished my first book <laughs> i finished the first two prompts so i finished the first book it is 3 30 now um and i am about to you know switch over to the next one and I just finished Heaven. I'm not going to talk about my feelings here because this is a booktube prize book. But shortly after this video, like normally within the first half or like definitely within the month of June, my uh, vlogs for the booktube prize books will go up. And so Heaven's discussion will be in there. It's definitely a very thought provoking book. And so I have quite a lot of thoughts to share on this one. Moving to moving on to the next two prompts for which for the time being, I'm going to continue with The Lost World and Other Stories. If that one fits other prompts better later, then I might switch around what prompts fit which book. But that is what I'm currently going to be reading. So um, it is what time? Eight o'clock. Uh, I am like 40 pages out from finishing The Land of Mist. Though ideally I also want to finish the two other short stories that are still in that collection. But those are like really just like 20 or like 40 pages long each. So that's definitely way more doable. Uh, but probably that, I mean, that's not going to happen anymore today. So I'm considering that that is going to be the final time I read in that book today still. And then I'm going to sit out the remainder of these prompts with my third read. So with my heart, um, which I will have on the screen somewhere. And so um, that is hopefully going to be something that I can fit into some prompts tomorrow. But I think I'm just going to stay for maybe the remainder of this sprint maybe it's still another sprint until the full becca sprints are over but i really need to take a nap before gavin sprints i'm having some wine now because wine always makes me super like um sleepy so hopefully after these sprints i will be in the mood to immediately fall asleep and then get a few hours sleep in and then be ready for gavin sprints All right, I finished um, Land of Mist, so it's not my favorite in this collection. Basically, my favorite in this collection is The Lost World, um, and the second one was like okay-ish, and then Land of Mist interested me less because it's basically like defending the idea that ghosts and stuff like that are real. Um, we have had the second roll drop, like the third roll drop, basically, uh, and so the what are we on then? Fifth and sixth prompts are spooky read and a YA. So both of these are going to have to be like, I'm going to stretch. 
So for spooky, I'm actually gonna do Land of Mist. So um, I it is definitely not spooky, but you know, ghosts and stuff like that are spooky elements. So I'm gonna go with Land of Mist for that one, uh, and then I'll one of the problems that I was previously using for Land of Mist I'll redistribute at some point. And then for YA, at this point in time, if I had to use the books that I'm planning, I'm going to stretch it immensely and put it on Heaven, which is definitely not a YA novel. The age of the characters is more like middle grade type, but for middle grade this is definitely way too heavy to read. So we're going to put it on YA um, because it would be interesting topic for kids of that age to read about however <laughs> as i said it's really quite brutal but so yeah that's what it currently is my sort of like plan we'll see if by the end of this 48 hours i have a better way to fill these prompts All right, so we just had the roll drops, the final roll drops, and <laughs> it ain't great. So the first one of those is water on a cover. I might use the loose interpretation of mist again, because basically it was like anything blue, anything water related, anything um, real water, of course, anything like a shell, a mermaid. And so mists has a link to water right <laughs> yeah. and so i'm gonna use land of mist for that and then i'll see like ideally i only want to combine two prompts for everything so one of the prompts for land of mist will need to go to something else but so yeah uh, i need to strategically think about this and then the second prompt was feed scroll so i went to instagram and there are two options i can go for the first one that I stumbled upon was Strange Beast of China, which I have on my Kindle, um, which does not help me towards zero TBR. It is over 200 pages, which is still a little bit ambitious, considering the fact that I still need to read 100 pages in my current read. Um, but it's, I mean, things could have been worse. And then the second option is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, which is the first physical book that I stumbled upon. Uh, and so that would help towards Project Zero TBR. It is also somewhere in the 200 pages, but it is written in first, so it will be a lot easier to do. So for now, I'm just going to forget about that and I'm just going to continue reading my heart. And then once I finish that one, then I will see how much time I still have left and what is the decision that I want to be making. It's 2.40, I had ordered my Starbucks for delivery at 2, so they are 40 minutes late, but okay, I have my Starbucks. I haven't had Starbucks in such a long time, because usually it's something I get when I go to the, a different city, When I go, because then I go to the train station, which is where our Starbucks is located, and so it's like not super out of the way, but you know, it's a little out of the way, I never go to the station unless I need to be. There. I mean, my bus stops there every day, but still, I never get off to get a Starbucks. So it's a little treat for this. <coughs> and Jesus. It's a little treat for this weekend. And now that I'm lactose intolerant, I actually get it with coconut milk. And I prefer coconut milk, which is a little bit of a hack for all of you paranoid lactose intolerant people because you can actually taste it so you know that they put the right milk in there and that they didn't just put a regular milk in there and ignore your requests but so we are we have like what 11 hours no almost 10 only now left to go things are getting down to the wire i am like two-thirds of the way into my third book um, and ideally I still want to read two short stories in the Arthur Conan Doyle one and then I should start my fourth book we'll see all right we are 4 30 I've finished this collection so in this collection I read 
280 pages or something like that, I think, over these two days. And in the entire collection, I will definitely say The Lost World is my favorite story within this one. Definitely this entire collection also ages. You know, there are definitely descriptions of people of different races that feel very uncomfortable. There is very much a sort of like white dominance perspective where the white characters kind of feel like they're superior to characters from other races. Um, but aside from that, um, some of these stories just don't interest me too much. So the Land of Mists, which is the one that I read the most pages on during this weekend, that one I didn't enjoy too much because that's all about spiritualism. The final one, When the World Screamed, which kind of tries to have uh, Challenger proof that the world is a living organism by hurting it. Um, I also didn't like that, definitely not in concept. Uh, what I did like from what I read today is the Disintegration Machine. Now that is only like 20 pages long, but I did like that one. And I mainly liked it because it has like a super unethical ending. <laughs> but I do think the character of Professor Challenger is quite interesting. He's really like the type of character that I, like the type of person that in real life I would absolutely not get along with. But it is an interesting character to read about. But so, yeah, if you want to read... The Lost World, and then I would say The Lost World is most worthwhile. I wouldn't necessarily point you towards any of the other short stories that are in this uh, Professor Challenger collection. Um, but so yeah, that means that we have about eight and a little under a half hour left to finish my heart and hopefully also on Earth or Briefly Gorgeous. So I don't know how doable that is because I don't know what my reading pace is going to be like with on Earth or Briefly Gorgeous. For my heart, I have about a third, I think, left to go through, um, but I might just pick up on Earth or Briefly Gorgeous for the next sprints, um, just to have a little bit of a change from my heart for a little bit. All right, 10 o'clock at night, I have finished my heart. So I have finished the fifth book, let's say, but I did, I did count all of the novellas in um, The Lost World separately. So, I mean, it's actually the third book, let's say. But so I am also like, I don't know, 35 pages or so into um, On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous. I'm definitely not going to be able to finish that today. And I'm also really starting to struggle a little bit. I'm not at the stage yet where I'm really like tired. I'm just tired of reading at this point in time. So I don't know whether I'm going to really push myself at this point further. I'll definitely still be in the sprints, but I think that probably I will just be taking way longer breaks than um, what the reading sprints are intended for. So half of the sprint, I'll probably still take it, be taking a break rather than reading. Um, but yeah, I will give you an update a little bit later. Um, but so On Earth, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous is a book written by Ocean Vuong. It is a letter to his mother. So Ocean Vuong is um, Vietnamese American. I don't think he was born in Vietnam. Oh yeah, in the story at least. I mean, it is a fictional story, but I believe it's quite autobiographical. And so he is born in Vietnam, but I think he has basically spent almost his entire life in America. Um, his mother has lived through the um, war in Vietnam, as well as her, her mother. Um, and this letter talks about the sort of like delicate relationship he has with his mother and talks about, you know, the intergenerational conflict to do with immigration and things like that. And, you know, I'm not that far into it, so I cannot really say too much about what it's going to be about. But it definitely is, there, there definitely is a complex relationship between the two of them. His mother um, suffers from PTSD as well as his grandmother. So, for example, the 4th of July fireworks, they are like in panic because they think that, you know, it's an attack and that, you know, there are bombings going on. And his mother, um, in her relationship with him, often also resorts to physical violence, to slapping him in order to get him in line or in order to, um, you know, um, give 
expression to her feelings or to her fears or to her feeling of um, lack of control. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say more because I don't actually know more than what I've read so far. But so so far, that one has really gorgeous writing. Ocean Vuong is also a poet. And you can really tell the way that he puts things into words is really beautiful. And this one has a correlation actually with My Heart, which is the book by the Bosnian author that I just read. Because both of them make the analogy between the migration of monarch butterflies from Canada to Mexico um, and, you know, migration of people. So I thought that, that so I thought that, that was very interesting that within the course of like, I don't know, an hour or something, I was reading two scenes that were basically making the exact same analogy. So what are the odds? But so yeah, I'm gonna be continuing with reading a little bit and then I'll check in with you guys at the end of these sprints. Morning guys and I did not do any more reading yesterday. So basically right after filming that clip I still stayed awake for like more than an hour, I think, but um, yeah, I just couldn't focus at all anymore. So I guess I should have taken a little nap in the afternoon. I thought I was good to go until the end, but yeah, final three hours really did me in. So um, in the end, I went to sleep two hours before the end of the Bucopleton. So I'm going to watch like the end of the final sprints um, later so that I still have like the round off. Like I, that was the main concern. I was like, yeah, but I want to be there when... Everything is rounded off and, you know, um, to, I don't know, end this event with everybody, but I just really needed to sleep. There was just no way that I was going to stay awake for another two hours. So, yeah, I've had my sleep. Today is a day off for me, so I'm going to take things slow. Probably will do some reading today, but not too much. You know, the idea is just to have this be a chill day. Might go to the hairdresser and get my hair cut because it's definitely getting too long. But so, yeah. That's my plan. But so yeah, uh, rounding off this reading vlog, basically for Becca's Book of Platon, I finished, basically I finished like five things, but in terms of books, it's like three books because uh, in one of them, I read like half of a novella and two short stories. Um, but I'm counting them as five separate things. And so I will have something on the screen that will show like everything I read and what prompts they served. So the only thing that I didn't end up finishing is the prompt for feed scroll for which I started on Earth were briefly gorgeous, but I only got 34 pages into that in the end. And then in terms of pages, I think overall I read 600 and then something, 624 maybe or something like that. I'll put it on the screen, um, which is what I did, uh, which is more or less, I think, what I did a few weeks ago when I did a 24 and 48 hour challenge for myself. I thought I was going to do better here because of the community aspect. So because of the fact that it was going to be together with a lot of people from the community. And so I was going to be pushed more to read. It would combat my sort of like reading weariness because I just have problems reading for such extended periods of time, but it ended up being more or less the same. But so yeah, had a great time during this weekend um, and I'm looking forward to the next edition. I always join Becca's Book Couple of All. I think it's one of the most fun readathons that take place throughout the year, especially since you can basically like, everybody can participate. You can be as competitive as you want to be. You can take it as chill as you want to. You can read whatever. And you can really stretch the prompts if you want. And if you want to go without the prompts, then, I mean, that's also just perfectly fine. But so it's really a readathon that's about the community aspect. And that's really cherished throughout that readathon because of those live shows. But so, yeah, looking forward to that. But first, we'll have the full month's uh, version in September, usually. So I'm also looking forward to that, of course. But so, yeah. Now I'm mainly looking forward to chilling, watching some books, you maybe going to the hairdresser and uh, probably also watching a movie or something like that. But so yeah, see you guys for the next one. <laughs>